Welcome into episode 362 of the podcast. It is to be expected the Kevin and Tyler show today. Drake. Drake wouldn't show his face if we would have lost this game by 20. And uh, and we lost this game by 44. So I'm not telling you guys anything you guys don't already know. Kevin isn't telling you guys anything you don't already know or that you already didn't see or probably have already heard on a couple other podcasts. Um, I don't think we're going to sit here for a good long hour and try and dissect this because there's not, I just don't think there's that much to dissect. Um, if we, I, I'm sure we could, but I think that would dip into the, uh, a uh, pity fest at some point. And, uh, well, that's something that Kevin and I, I think I can speak for him. We just, neither of us probably see necessary. So I will say, Kev, the shirt you're wearing today, I know you've had that shirt for seven years. Uh, I believe I bought this shirt in t- spring of 2014. So yep. uh, yeah, this shirt is eight years old. Love that. I love that out of you. I, I, uh, so I, I, I don't buy a whole lot of clothes, man. So when I buy them, they usually, they last a while. I don't either. I don't either. I still wear... Obviously, we got a crap load of stuff as part of the program. I, I don't. We're wear a both lot. getting shit on in the group chat for still wearing our Iowa football yeah. shoes. <laughs> like, I, mean, I, come I on. still have like five pair that I haven't touched yet. I mean, I'm trying to not spend my like. I'm trying yeah. bags, right? Bread. Love bread, that bread. bread. If you respect. Clothes in particular, I think, is one of the things that people waste the most amount of unnecessary money on. Yeah. I, I, however, as as we've gotten older into adulthood, and you were probably a little bit further ahead of the curve on this one as uh, relative to me, um, there is some utility in you know spending a pretty penny on some functional clothing, right? Like uh, you need you need a couple really nice shirts to go to. Um, you know, the occasional nice event, right? You need a good pair well, of khakis. Um, of course, yeah, you need a full wardrobe. But I'm just saying, like, there's people out there who, you know, I probably shouldn't say this as we are a merchandising brand kind of, but how many T-shirts can some people wear, man? Hopefully a lot. Uh, <laughs> you can get those at thewashedupwalkons.com or hawksbyamillion.com um but i mean seriously and now especially with nil like literally every athlete has like their own t-shirt you're right I, i'm like who's all wearing this stuff man how many t-shirts yeah. are, we, are we are we selling out here no i'm with you i'm with you i i think if i had in my wardrobe um see and the thing is too the way i do it is i like to find a brand and a style of shirt that they specifically have created that that i like and then I want 10 of those in different colors. That's what I want. I, I don't need a bunch of different, just give me 10 of the same shirt in a different color. I'm good, right? I've got a pair of khakis that I like. I got a pair of uh, blue chinos that I like. If I need to dress up, a couple pairs of nice joggers. If I need it, it's a little cooler. I've got some like six or seven nice pairs of shorts. I'm good, right? I'm not mm-hmm. George, I'm not George Kittle. With a, a shoe closet full of, you know, 200 pairs of shoes. I'm just not that guy. Most people aren't George Kittle, by the way. Uh, there's only one. There's, there's one George one. Kittle. One and George that Kittle. that singular George Kittle, uh, who is in our clan of Clash of Clans, um, he did score a touchdown today on National Tight Ends Day as we record this. That was about an hour ago when he scored that touchdown. His helmet looks like something out of the future i don't know what he's wearing on his head but these this helmet technology has got to be advancing um to places that simply didn't matter for the long snapper surely and uh yeah it looks like he's going to war in some some battle Uh, him and bosa both have it it's it's weird have you seen it uh yeah i know how what you're talking about i mean at a certain point though like these helmets can only do so much right it doesn't matter how much collision the helmet absorbs your brain still gonna be bouncing around inside your skull oh yeah yeah you're you're bouncing it's bouncing yeah. um 
all of this talk to probably try and avoid what hurt our brains over the weekend and our bodies. Physically, it hurt. It hurt everywhere. Uh, what Ohio State did to the Hawks, 54-10. to 10. Um, The most points scored on an Iowa Hawkeye football team, Kev, since that day in Minneapolis, 2014. Which the was puck? the worst beating? Uh, oh, it had to be that day. Yeah, the, the, the Gophers, the Gophers really rammed one up our uh, our, our behinds that day. Dude, how did we get beat that bad by them? That was actually like a really good football team. That 2014 Gopher squad. They what had, did they end up? I think they ended up nine and three or eight and four. Okay. Um, but uh, oh shit, what's his name? Uh, Oh, the tight end had three tutties that day. Yeah, the tight end had himself a day. I'm drawing a blank. Who the hell is he? He's like a really good tight end in the league now. Yeah. It's it's not Mark Andrews, is it? It's not Mark Andrews, but he did play for the the Ravens for a while. Uh, Yes, he did. That's why I'm getting confused with him. Was it Max something? I don't know. Max. Oh, yeah. Ah, shit. This is pissing me off. Somebody's going to – yeah, somebody's going to tweet it at us. But he – We were winning that game too, though. (laughs) That's the funny thing. We were. We were. That game started off seven nothing Hawks. We were winning both of these games, and then I think Minnesota went on to score a touchdown. Their next five possessions, yeah. Um, that had to be the weather was nice uh, for for the Hawks. Uh, oh, the weather was, dude. It was beautiful. I mean, are we are we kidding? We're in the back half of October, and we've got seventy sunny and seventy five. I mean, what? It's all you could ask for. Um, Keep those carbon emissions up, baby. Let's go. <laughs> global warming for the win yeah <laughs> um yeah this is um it's something that you don't see very often i, I do think that that minnesota day was a, a much worse beating and i and i you know we'll it's talk about cold it. and miserable that day uh, it was a miserable day yeah i mean the outside of the game the factors that add on to it being sucky uh were enhanced that day at minnesota um but I think what what added to this game the other day was that it was a it was a game for a while, right? Like the defense, this is it's such it's the weirdest thing. And I know that for you, it probably there's this itch of like it doesn't feel like we played great. But I know that you know that this defense balled out as best they could for as long as they could in this game on Saturday. Um this is the best. I'm, I'm going to put it out there. This is the best, and I haven't obviously seen every football game that's ever happened, but this has got to be the best defensive performance by a team that had, that gave up 54 points in all of football history. Um, it's got to be. Uh, well, I mean, how many of those 54 points are really on them, though? I mean, four of the field goals, they got the – or maybe three of the field goals, they had the ball like on the 30 yard line or better. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm the not saying that. So I'm not saying the defense gave it up. So that's 16 there. And then they had a fumble or another interception, like on their own 10. Yeah. I mean, how many of these 54 points could you actually put on the defense? Half 30, maybe about half. Um, I think yeah, they have one drive in the first uh, in the first half, and then the rest of Ohio State scoring was short field field goals and the pick six right before halftime. Oof, that was not good. Um, yeah, so they had sh- they had four short field field goals and a pick six to be up. And then one 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 actual drive where they, one, they marched down the field. So right, right. Yeah, I mean, talk about a phase of the game being put in like the worst situations imaginable. The entire game <laughs> couldn't be couldn't be worse. Couldn't be worse. No, I was like, I was honestly like super super impressed with how they were playing that first half. To just, I mean constantly being called out to put on the put out the fire right and then yep. just constantly showing up and doing it like really playing, impressive stuff. filling really gaps impressive. setting edges playing their balls off all 
just fighting as hard as they possibly could to make sure that they were only going to get three. Um, yeah, and really. In the second half, they had some. They got they got some guys over there, right? Yeah. That Marvin Harrison Jr. Dog. His dad is a dog. Dog. <laughs> His dad is an all time dog. I actually uh, that that Colts team with Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, and Reggie Wayne, unbelievable. Dallas Clark probably was like my favorite team to watch growing up as a kid. That was like an all American. I think everybody in America liked that team. Yeah, that was that 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 was that was my favorite team to watch. But yeah, guy has some good genes. Passed it down to the next generation, and that guy could make some plays. I turned to Lauren. They they zoomed in on him making a catch, and then uh, he was like getting tackled. And as he went down. You could just see, like you know, similar to a bunch of guys we we played with, but he's just one of those guys who he's so lean, he's so muscular. You can tell that he's a combination of genetic freak plus a bunch of hard work plus a you know he's he's just a combination of all the best things. And I looked at Lauren and I go, "Our kid's not getting those genetics." I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry about that one. Um, yeah, he's uh they they I mean, Kev, they are they're better than us. Like, right? Like as a twenty as a as as twenty-two football players, if you want to add the three specialists in, um, which are special teams, Tori even had a tough day. Jesus. Uh not 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 a good day for the special teams. Were we trying to mimic all the things that happened in the seventeen game, by the way? It was the exact opposite flip. It was we had six turnovers. I think they had four, five, four, I want to say. Four. When they played us in Kinnick. Um, Opening game interception. We did, the, we did the fake punt mishap again. We That was supposed to be them this time. <laughs> they could have done it and it would have mattered. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just – not only were we outmatched, but – we just played a sloppy football game in two of the three phases. Incredibly sloppy. I think, uh, and you and I were both really confident that the Hawks could stay within that 30-point spread. We're going to get to the to our picks here now and, and get those out of the way from this past weekend. And if we don't turn the ball over, Kev, or even if we just turn the ball over... Half as much? <laughs> as much as we normally did. Going into that game, we averaged two turnovers per game. If you give us two turnovers instead of six... I think we stay with really seven though with that with punt. the punt. Yeah, I think we stay within thirty easily. Well, you, you just think about it. All right, we score a field goal like towards the end of the second, midway through the second quarter, about right. Um, they get the ball back, they punt, and it's sixteen to ten. Yeah, with like five minutes left to go in the half. Right. Yeah, it's a football game, right? It's a game. So they punt. This is where this is the exact sequence where it all starts to go downhill for the Hawks. Yep. They punt. We do not fair catch the ball. Lands on the 10 yard line, rolls to the two. Correct. False start. We're on the one. Bad. Not a whole lot you can do from the one yard line, even with a good offense. A struggling offense, uh, it's punt alert already. And with this offense, we've I literally said we should punt on third down. I was worried. Well, we punt on fourth down. It's not a great punt. It's a low hang time punt. They bring it back to the 30 and field goal. Yep. Defense puts out the fire. Puts it out again. Field goal. Very next drive, we bring out a kick that we shouldn't have. Our KOR team had a rough day. They had a couple of good ones, but overall, we cannot be bringing balls out and getting tackled inside the 20, inside the 15. Correct. They had a couple they got out to like the 30-ish, but you know, when you have eight tries at KOR, I, I'd hope at least one gets to the 30. True. Um, yeah, we get bring the ball to the 15, pick six, and it was 16 to 10. Now it's 26 10 going at halftime. And a six-point game is something that we can we can deal with, right? A 16-point right. game is it, it's 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 a monster of an obstacle for the for this team to come overcome right now. I was just gonna say 16-10 feels like a game. Now, if you watch the game, you're probably thinking, okay, 
this is very similar to oh was it uh the Michigan Penn State game where they were it was 16 14 in that game but Michigan, Michigan Penn State was it, yeah. they were dominating but it was somehow a two point game right mm-hmm. it was very similar to Iowa at 16 10 you're like okay this is a six point ball game right now but Ohio State has Iowa by the balls right but like, you can just think about like just like the feeling of being 16 10 and a half your offense just had a 50 yard drive so they right. m- managed to move the ball a little bit and score yep. put points themselves on the board and it's a one possession game yep whole lot different than 26 10 and the offense just had two really rough drives yeah and then game. we come out of halftime jack campbell makes a great play unreal again imagine it's 16 10 at that point not 26 10 and we have the ball on the plus side of the 50. now there's juice right but but we um we, we take that nice play that we made and we turn it into basically a 25 yard completion for Ohio state. Now they have the ball in the 50 with uh, the nice little, mm. I mean, that, that forced me to tweet a sma- a shake in my head emoji because <laughs> you learn First how to take a snap as a five-year-old in peewee football. Man. I, that, I, that, I, that's I do embarrassing. I do love how, again, I, you know, I, I have become, miss i've become miss uh termed or i I don't know how you want to say it people think because i like to provide like this positive perspective this other side of things like hey maybe think about things this way so that we aren't so sad people like to you know they love sinking into the pit of misery right now and so people are calling me this year on twitter the uh the kf the bf the iowa offense the spencer petrus apologist right like i People have this idea that I think that they can do no wrong, um, which is weird because I've literally never said that. And if they listen to the show, they would hear me criticize kind of all of those people over the last six weeks. Um, nonetheless, it's funny to watch those people who uh, were Alex Padilla fans up until this point come out and say, well, well, well of, of course, he's he never gets reps with the number one center. He's. And now all of a sudden we've got a bunch of Alex Padilla put apologists. And, and is you that chose, the best? You, you chose violence with your tweet. What the, uh, that, yeah, dude, that, that, come, that come on a, now. That was, that was a dude. I, I know the jokes write themselves, right? But that oh, was a violent tweet. That was served up on a platter with, with a fucking, with a, that, that was a plate of fluffy pancakes, dude, with, with syrup and butter. That was the easiest tweet I've ever sent. You, it was you, are, f- you are Cersei Lannister being like, I'm going to choose violence with this. Yeah, I'm, I'm blowing up that building with everybody locked in. That was the easiest tweet I've ever made. <laughs> and it was funny as fuck, dude. That tweet was funny as hell. And I don't care what you think about it. Because if you can drop your emotion just by the storyline. I'm not talking about you. You obviously understand and are, can get past it. All these people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Dude, brother, I don't think it would be more triggering than if the president of the United States was tweeting racial slurs. That was that set people. (laughs) off. Dude, it writes itself, like you said. It writes itself. Now, do I honestly think that that I mean, that that snap probably was 50 50, right? There was probably a little bit of center, a little bit of Alex Padilla looked on the quarterback to me from the replay. I would agree, but. You know, we'll give we'll give him that one, right? Comes out and throws a pick. Was that pick on him? Uh, it tipped off of Laporta's hand into the, you know, it's it is what it is, right? The point is that with the way the storyline has gone, we want Padilla, we want Padilla, we want Padilla. It is ironic that he comes in, and it actually for a minute does look worse than Petrus being in the game. Now, at this point. We're all just soaking in a hot tub of we hate ourselves, right? It's just we hate ourselves, city. You're invited. It's population, everybody in Iowa, and everybody that supports the black and gold. Do I think that we'll talk about, we'll just talk about the quarterback change for a second because I don't really give a fuck. I, I, I truly am indifferent about the quarterback situation. And I think part of that showed. I, 
I think it just kind of shows what we've kind of been saying. I, I feel like this has been the main message of our podcast for the last year or so. Yeah. It, I don't think it matters a whole lot who the quarterback is. And, and, and Kevin, even if it does, even if Padilla provides us 2% better, great. Let's have him out there then. But let's not suddenly expect that things are going to no, he by by no means was Spencer the problem, Padilla the solution. Then all of a sudden we're gonna correct start averaging four hundred yards a game of offense. No, right. never. So Dude. let's get past. Let's let's everybody get past that. Now, when it comes to Padilla, do I think that bringing him in at halftime of the Ohio State game is is the correct spot in hindsight through these first seven games? No, I do not. Do I think that? he was given the best opportunity to succeed coming into, you know, no, I do not. I think you probably, my, my brother in Christ, there is no quarterback who would be in a good opportunity to succeed put in that situation. I don't no. care who you are. No, I don't care. If, I don't care if CJ Stroud transferred at halftime, put on to a Iowa. Roll. and <laughs> dude, that's, dude, that's this offensive line cannot, Pass protect. No, and we're going to get to the line. Utter inability to do it. They're 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 god awful. And let me get there in a second. I'm going to finish the Padilla thought. Um, do I think that Padilla got a fair shot, or that we can really grade Alex this year? We saw him in three or four games last year. I mean, we it's not like we haven't seen what he can do. Um, do I think that we gave Padilla a fair chance? Not even close, right? I think he needs to be able to enter the week as the guy practice all week with the ones have that mindset, have that rhythm going into a full game week. And then a Saturday where he can start the game and he can get a full opportunity. I'm hoping that this week is that week. Do I think that our offense looks any bit significantly better? No, I do not. I hope to God I'm wrong. I hope I can play this clip after this weekend and say, Holy shit. Padilla looked great out there, but I don't think that will be the case. Now, I don't know if that's the plan or not. I don't know if it's Petrus. I don't know if you would think that at this point, okay, we finally put Padilla in after all the, after the fans were literally outside of Kinnick with the pitchforks that they're going to probably give him one week to be the guy. But um, I just don't think it's going to matter. The bigger issue is some of these replays, Kev. I mean, it's like the offensive line has something against Spencer. I mean, it's, it's they didn't really, do, they didn't do Alex any favors either. <laughs> and, 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 and I, I, I noticed that too. I'm waiting for Alex's mobility to get him out of these sacks. And he took three in the, in the second half because there's not even enough time to escape. And, and, and granted, right. This is against the number two team in the country. It is. It is. Under, we got to understand that. Like we knew there was a talent gap going into this game wide but my goodness did that look like the, the performance did you by guys the... ever have a team that you like just constantly beat up on in high school or were you the team that got beat up on uh well while i was playing yeah we it was we if we played mason city or fort dodge we were it was how many points do we want to score yeah mason city yeah it, it, it was like, you know, these, these defensive linemen know it's a passing down. It was like, hey, 20 bucks to whoever gets this sack. You know, it's like, it, it, it was like, it, it wasn't a competition against the guy across from you. It was a competition with the guy on the other side of the ball who's also rushing the quarterback. You, you know, know what I don't like? You know what I don't like too? And this is, um, this is off of just their skill and ability. This is something that they can fix is, um, is the, is is they're not picking Petrus up off the ground every time. Do you notice that? I've noticed that, yeah. Um, and it's not it's not a it's not a Petrus thing where hey Spencer can get up on his own. Obviously, he's a twenty two year old kid. He can he can stand up off the ground by himself. It's a it's a um optics thing. It's a respect thing. It's a oh shit, that's my bad. Let me help you up kind of thing. Um, I and I haven't seen that every play. Uh, and that's a little disheartening. Um, and I hope somebody says something about that because it, it doesn't, it, it's been noticed by multiple fans as well. Um, and that 
is something that is controllable. You know, effort and attitude and helping your teammates, those are controllable things. And um, and maybe you suck at at guard or tackle, but but you're a hell of a teammate. Um, I think Spencer falls into a category like that. He's not great at playing the quarterback position, but damn, is he a good teammate, right? And we've heard that over and over. And you can hear it when he does his interviews. Some of these linemen, though, I mean, they get beat, they turn around, they watch Spencer get licked up on, and then they stand there and watch him have to get up off the ground. I mean, that's that hurts. Um, let's take a quick break. We're, we're getting hot here. Take a quick break. Let's go to our picks quick. Uh, you know, our, our picks section brought to you by DRF Sportsbook. Head on over to ia.drf.com. Uh, they are the local sports book. They're the hometown sports book. They're the walk-on sports book. And they're where you can make a bunch of green right now. There's a new customer offer. If you sign up, just open an account at ia.drf.com. You get a $300 no fret bet. There's other promotions as well. They have a bunch of, you know, uh, analytics information and education on their site, which isn't always a thing that you find on a sports book. So it's, it's user friendly for the person who may not be, uh, well-versed in the betting world, uh, like Kevin or I would be, especially Kevin. Uh, let's get to the picks. We obviously missed on the Iowa pick. Thanks to I'm going to, I'm going to blame that on the seven turnovers and I will die I'll go to my grave that and say if that we only turn the ball over twice, we cover that 30 points. Um, Syracuse. Dude, Syracuse is a good football team. They're a good football team. Now, did they blow it? Yes. Yes, they did. They didn't score a single point in the second half. But they had Clemson on the ropes, but they cover that plus 13 spread. You got to love that. I don't understand the Big 12 at all. I know nothing about football, evidently, because I just bet on Baylor to beat West Virginia, they go in and they give up all the points to West Virginia, who's arguably the worst of all of the teams in the Big 12, and they lose. Now, two weeks later or a week later, they play Kansas, who was had game day a couple weeks ago. Kansas is scoring points off the rails, plus nine. And Kansas, for a while, was getting, they were getting railroaded. And they finally brought it back, but couldn't cover the spread. They end up losing by, I believe, uh, 35-23. Yeah. So I um, I missed on on Kansas and Iowa. I got the Syracuse pick uh, one and two for the weekend. Yep. Um, so we're going to miss on the Hawks, but I, I feel like it'd be just an absolute disrespect to our podcast, to our fans, if – the Hawks are ever getting 30 and we don't bet on them. I agree. So I feel like that was a mandatory bet and I'll stick by it. And I'll echo your thoughts. If we turn the ball over two times or less, we cover that. We cover that game easily. Um, my other two picks were Houston minus three at Navy. They cover that pretty easy. I think they win by like 17 or something like that. Nice. Um, and then my last pick was this Ole Miss be- plus two at, um, at LSU. Uh, they were controlling that game earlier. They were up 17-3 to start the game. And then yep. uh, and LSU then, just starts going on a tear. And uh, like the back half of scoring was 42-3 to LSU. It, they ended up beating the brakes off them. I, I, I'm telling you, Kev, I don't understand. I don't get football. I don't understand it. Betting's hard. That's why even the best sports bettors out there, you know, are 60%. 60%. Yeah. Um, Drake actually ends up going one and two as well. So we all went one and two. Um, Sean, Sugar Sean well, O'Malley. That's, that's pitting. This is a one and two podcast. This, this is a one and two podcast. Right this now. is a one and two podcast. Um, sure. I'll, I'll say a few words on Drake. He said the exact reason why he thought Sean could win, uh, and it was because it was a three round fight, and the other guy he was fighting usually comes out slow and 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 works into it and needs more rounds. And what do you know, Sugar Sean at plus two twenty odds ends up taking a two to one decision. Um, Dillashaw dislocated his shoulder and still finished the round that he was in. Those guys are absolutely absurd. Um, and Oliveira, I believe actually got fucked bad. Um, and he's kind of washed, I believe in the fight game. Um, even though he would kill both of us. 
Uh, so Drake one and two, Kevin one and two, me one and two, DRF Sportsbook. If you also would like to be one and two, but maybe you could be two and one, maybe even three. No, make some cash. Um, okay. So we talked about Padilla. Do, do you agree? I guess I'm curious. This is this is just curiosity podcast now. Are you? What camp are you in right now with our quarterback situation? Like I said, I don't think it really makes that big of a difference. Um, man, that first half out of Spencer was 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 really bad, tough to watch. We make Dude. the switch, and then three plays into the Padilla rain, we have two turnovers. Uh, the Padilla rain, <laughs> um, <laughs> like it's Game of Thrones. I, I I think I'd lean Padilla, but I I honestly six one way, half a dozen the other. Yeah. There's there's such bigger issues with this offense than the quarterback. Uh, like I said, I don't I don't know if one gives you exactly more of a chance to win, right, than the other. Um, do you feel know. like it would be fair to Alex throwing him to the wolves at at half at at OSU that you'd give him a full week of prep as knowing he's the guy and then giving you, you know I really time. don't buy into that like oh he's tossed in there like we're taught next man in if you're not preparing like you're the starter if you're not taking mental reps on the sideline like you're actually playing the game then you're doing your teammates a disservice and you're not being ready to go in the game um so if you're not ready to go that's on you that's not on the coaches I agree with that but don't you think there's something to knowing you're the guy there's something there's at least a couple percent of knowing you're the guy and having a full week of practice or or maybe you don't think so tell me i'm tell me i'm fucking wrong i mean maybe sure yeah you know i understand your mindset of you're preparing like you're the starter anyway and and that's what fans don't should be right i mean that's what fans don't understand it, it's not like spencer got hurt and he's like oh shit where's my helmet i gotta go in and get the play call and take a right. snap oh shit i fumbled like you got a whole halftime know that you're you're the guy going out there um yeah i mean sure it, it a slight it should be a slight advantage if you're taking reps with the ones all week long is there something to to giving alex and this is this is starting to get into the range of like okay now we're judging our opponents without playing them but is there something to giving him northwestern to at least settle in against the not number 2 team in the country versus a team that is really, really good. Well, I, I again, I don't care who you throw out there this week. They're going to look better than they looked last week. I fuck and God, Kev, I hope so. <laughs> and, and, and if they don't, then oof, man. Um, let's just put it this way: this is a must-win game because the goal is to get to six wins. Now, yeah, not not for whatever bowl game they're going to go to. It's because we need the month and a half of practices for next year. Correct. They need to bring um, back two days during bull prep. I, I was just going to say that I, I was just going to say, I, I hope that these boys realize what territory they're in. They are in 2014 tax slayer bull territory. Um, De December is going to be an unpleasant month. One worry or the other. Um, might as well be getting better at football. I would agree. I would agree. A lot, a lot of time for young guys. Oh, what's that offensive line? But young. A lot of time for development there. That isn't necessarily important for the bowl game. Who gives a shit about the fucking Detroit Bowl? At that point, it's it's more about wow, twenty twenty three is already among us, and we need to get better fast. Um. I'm trying to think if there's anything else more to talk about here. This was uh, the defense played great, uh, and 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 yes, Ohio State made some plays in the second half, but they were going to. I mean, it, time of possession actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was when I checked it. It ended up being basically thirty thirty. Oh um, well, yeah, when you have the ball on the thirty yard line going in, you can only have it for so long. Right. Right. Um, <sighs> I mean, uh, yeah, we the defense helped. Played, played really well, and eventually, like that, you you give a, a good team enough opportunities, and they're they're gonna make some. Plays. They're gonna make plays. Yeah. Um, we held them to three of thirteen on third down. That's an yeah, incredible. Yeah, that's it. That's really incredible. Well third down. Um, 
I, I, I just really like the effort out of the guys. I, I Joe like, Evans, Joe Evans made it a, a, an amazing play. That was, that, I, I, I literally didn't believe it. It was like, no, they had to have blown that play dead. Wait, that, that didn't just happen. We're not winning this game right now. I, I felt the exact same thing. I was like, I'm waiting for the flag. I'm waiting for something to happen here. And no, the Hawks I'm are waiting currently- for them to like, no, that was actually a pass. Um, no, awesome play by Joe. Like I said, I, I was really commendable effort by them. Just continually running back out of the field and showing up despite the, despite the circumstances and, and, and playing their balls off. So, yeah, I mean, um, that's something I can always, and they're always, always look to and, and like hold my head up with pride. It's like, yeah, that's, that's, that's the way we do it. I want to, I've been asked, I, I got asked multiple times in my DMS. People are sliding in the DMS, Kev. Uh, boy, it's got to be awkward in that locker room for the defense having to having to uh, when, when Brian walks by or when the offensive guys walk by. And, and people don't get it. Um, and I don't know how to nicely tell them that they don't get it. Um, but there is no awkward. Um, there's not a single defensive guy in that locker room that when Brian Ferentz walks by, they go, wish he was better at his job. They're not even fucking close to thinking that it doesn't cross a single one of their minds. They're so hyper-focused on their job, their role, doing their best, being a good teammate. And they know that every other one of their teammates and coaches is also focused on doing that, including Brian, that that doesn't even cross their mind. I, I don't know how to get it to any of you, get it to through your heads that, that that's not how it is. Like the locker room is tight. If there was, and I'm not saying that there isn't times where across the country, you might find a program or a team where you, you do lose a locker room and they're divided against each other. Not at Iowa. I'm telling you not at Iowa. And the reason I can tell you that without being in there is you would see it. You would see it on the sideline. You would hear it in the interviews. You would, you would see other places where it was, it was blatantly obvious and you just don't see it. And if they were going to divide, they would have already divided at this point. So just take that out of the narrative. Like you're just, you know, and I, and you don't have to say anything on that Kev. You can, if you want, but. No, I mean, I think you you hit the nail right on the head. I mean, you can go back. I forget which game it was after, but you know, the Jack Campbell interview yeah. where like they're asking him about the offense and it's like, who who the fuck are you? All right. Those are my brothers. Those are my teammates. Those yeah. are my best friends. Like, yeah. Um, I want to talk about the Tory Taylor Rastetter impersonation quick. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I was thinking about that as well for the folks out there. This was not a fake punt. This was a rugby punt. Correct. And the punters have to this point been taught keep running like keep doing your little trot out. Yep. The longer you do that, the more coverage has to get downfield. And if there is no one there and you can get the first down, take go it. ahead and take it. I think we have to take that last coaching point out of the equation and just tell them <laughs> to punt the ball. <laughs> so here's here's what I thought. And and it it was I noticed something. I know what he saw. But yeah. there was a guy who was spying him. And that's, <laughs> right. That, that he um, so before this punt on Tory's first punt that he did kick, he held onto it longer and took a peek. You can literally watch his head. His head comes up and he takes a peek at the rush to see what he's got. That is because of what he's been told. Like they must have seen something on tape with Ohio State where on a lot of plays, the Ohio State entire 11, they're all bailing out and trying to go back and set up a return. And so Torrey on the first punt, granted he kicks it, but he takes a second longer. Go back and look. And he 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 peeks up and he sees, okay, and he holds onto it for an extra second. Like Kev said, that gives the guys a, a, another second to run down and cover. And I think that the, I think that LeVar Woods, I think in the game plan for this week, knowing it was Ohio State, that they were going to have to have a lot happen. I think part of the game plan was that sentiment that uh, 
that kind of choice option, if you will, of, hey, hold on to it, and if there's a spot, take it and go. I do not think that Tory pulled a Colton mental-wise and thought, hey, I'll just fucking do it on my own, right? I think he got a little directive during this week of practice. Now, well, yeah, I'm sure they saw something on tape. It's like, hey, these guys sometimes aren't great about forcing the punt, right? Right, right. Um, uh, and like you said, you probably got a little key, a little a little yep. idea in the back of his head after that first one. Um, the problem maybe is... Maybe we just don't do it versus the five Yeah, 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 yeah. The problem <laughs> is, is, in theory, it works really well. In practice or in execution, five stars. And it turns with some, out with some, with some closing speed that those five stars are so damn athletic. And when they make a decision, it happens fast. They turn on a dime, and the space between you and them and you and the first down marker, it gets it it, it changes. It gets different. Uh, Colton realized that Tori realized that I think Tori even might've had it if he tries to run outside and not inside. Um, but it clearly didn't work. Uh, and, and, and Tori was, I, I agree with you. Like, this is the type of game like, Hey, we're gonna have to steal possession or two. Right. Right. I mean, we ran the pull cat for a reason when we played him in 17. Right. <laughs> um, exactly. So, you know, I, I, I applaud Tori for pulling it and trying to make a play. Um, it didn't work. I think it fucked with his head the rest of the game. Uh, I think he was, you know, I think he, he let that get to him mentally a little bit. And even on the first one, when he was already thinking about it, like, oh, what do I got here? What's the rush look like? That first punt wasn't great either. He did not punt the ball well, um, which is something that we definitely needed to happen. Uh, in a game like this, I, even if Tory had a 70 yard average the other day, I don't think it was going to matter, but, um, yeah. So those are my thoughts on that. Um, yeah. So all in all, I mean, we get soundly beat on special teams, I'd say. Yep. Obliterated on offense, um, defense played their best. Eventually Ohio state ended up getting theirs. Um, that was a game that we needed to dominate on two out of three phases. And yes. To have a chance. To have a chance. And that just, yeah, it just didn't happen. So, and, you know, and I get Hawk fans are angry. Um, do you, Kev? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, to me, watching that game is like, there's just such a talent gap here. Uh, I, I don't, if you're Brian Ferentz, I don't know what you do. I, 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 I've said it before on this podcast. I, I do not have any solutions. I'm not that smart. I don't know. I don't know how to call an offense. I couldn't even begin to think of, of, of a solution with, with, with your personnel that you have right now of how to get this machine going a little bit. Um, yeah, no, I see where you're going with it. I, 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 I hear in your voice, like, hey, where, you know, as we wrap this episode up, like, where do we go from here? What does it look like moving forward? Um, I think the, I think the defense and special teams have a lot to fall back on. I think they can be elite for the rest of the season against the five opponents that we have left. I think this team as a whole, regardless of how bad the offense is, knows that all five games left on the schedule are winnable. And all absolutely. five, absolutely, and, they still are, yeah. And, and um, and they are obviously aware that all five of those games are very losable as well. Like these are these are toss up games. We're going into a five week stretch of toss up games. Um, although I did not like how good Wisconsin looked against Purdue, uh, this weekend. Um, but maybe we'll talk about that some more on. Yeah, Wisconsin. I I I cannot figure them out this year. I have no idea. I have no I, idea. I put out a tweet saying the Big Ten West is just a dumpster fire. I can't figure out half these teams. Like Minnesota gets their bell rung. Um, Purdue drops an egg versus Wisconsin. Wisconsin, after losing to a subpar Michigan State team, 
comes out and and beats the hell out of a Purdue team that's supposed to be one of the favorites to win the West now. Um, I don't know either, dude. You know, the scary thing is Nebraska can still win the West. Yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, what's the standings, right? Like, what is... I think they're like third or something like that. Yeah, Big it's ten. Illinois, Purdue, Nebraska. Nebraska, Illinois is this week. And that's and that's the barn burner right now. Literally, that's the barn burner. Our I think current- Illinois wins this game, and I, they still have to play Purdue yet, though. Never mind. So here's here's I don't know who has who left. I could probably deduce if I had to, but I'm not going to do it on the podcast. This is the current Big Ten West standings. Illinois sits atop the the our half of the conference at three and one, and they lost to Indiana. Correct. We lost to Rutgers last week. It's. The West is just oof. Purdue sits right behind them at three and two. So they're a half game back because they've they've played one more conference game. I believe that that game is in three weeks, I believe. Yeah. Illinois Purdue. Nebraska sits in third at two and two. Wisconsin at fourth in two and three. And then Northwestern, Iowa, and Minnesota all round out fifth place tied for fifth at one and three in the conference. Yikes. I mean, that is, that is not good. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm as, I'm as confused as you and I'm not even going to try and understand it. Um, I will say this for, for our offense, uh, I also don't have answers and I'm not going to stand here. Like I do. Um, we are at a spot where, uh, the state of the program and that sounds really dramatic. Um, and I don't feel it as that dramatic, but most 99% of Hawkeye nation does certainly Twitter and Facebook does. Um, the way that social media has evolved and created a a town square for basically an entire fan base to um, exponentially devolve itself into um, complete chaos has sped up the process of a 10 and two West division champ who granted got smoked in the big 10 championship and had some, clear issues but one year later is having a down year is going to fight for bowl eligibility and has our entire fan base calling for not just brian's head who's a lot of people have wanted his head for basically since he took over his oc and and i and that's warranted right his his numbers have been bad he has not been a good offensive coordinator um and and objectively that's just what the rankings say He's been in the 90s basically his whole career out of 130 teams. But now they're calling for a lot of people, whether they want to actually say the words or not, are saying, uh, are calling for Kirk's head. And um, I get it. Everything just seems like it's, you know, we're in hell right now, right? But I also wonder where college football is going anymore and we've talked about it with other programs a ton where you get three years as a new coach and then if you aren't producing you might be gone and we have to be careful we have to be careful what we wish for um texas a&m had the best recruiting class in the country they are arguably um you know, should be a top five team every year. They have Jimbo uh, Fisher as their coach. And and they're like an hour away from the most fertile recruiting grounds in the country. And and when it comes to recruiting and, and and why someone would choose Texas A&M relative to Iowa, there's, there's, yeah, they have, you know, go down the list and they currently sit at three and four. Um, it's not that simple. 
right? Teams and programs are going to have a bad year every once in a while. Most of them, right? A lot of them are going to go through bad decades. Some of them aren't going to be good for 30 or 40 years. And because, and I, and I really think that a lot of this has been accelerated because this is a sadness and a spot that we have not felt in a decade since that four and eight season. And yes, the offense looks completely inept. Doesn't look, they are completely inept. We are severely lacking in talent. Go down the list. But I just, I just, I'm not even asking anybody else the question. I'm just pondering the idea of does a coach get a bad year anymore? You know, you miss on recruiting a, a couple of times. Some guys drop out, they retire, they quit, whatever injuries. Yeah, a few guys leave early and then all of a sudden the pantry is a little, and, a little empty. And, and, and do you get a bad year? Or does a guy who's been around, and I get it, like there's all these articles coming out. Is Kirk Ferentz more more uh, more loyal to a, a archaic offense than he is to his own fan base? Like it's it's fun to read those articles, right? It's it's you know you're all it's misery porn. Like it, it is what it is. <laughs> it's like hey, we're sad. Let's let's just read everything that just heightens this sadness even more. Right. Let's just feed into the chaos. Um, but I just look back and think like, man, they've they've responded well when they have had bad years. Yeah. I mean, you can look at what oh six, oh seven was a bad year, follows up by a nice oh eight, nine couple seasons there. Ten was probably a little disappointing for them. Right. Um you know, 2012, rough year, don't make a bowl. That 2013 season was, you know, pretty a solid season, man. We I, 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 I would call we, it a good, a good we over. To like one of the most NFL stud packed uh, teams by seven in the. Correct. In the, uh, what fucking bowl was that? The Outback Bowl. 14. 14 disappointing f finish of the year, right? That, that was supposed to be a year that was hyped up, right? We were supposed to be really good that year. Had a lot of returning starters. Uh, start six and one and then go one and four down the stretch. Yep. 15, we responded. And so, right and then, down here. I mean, went on a pretty pretty good run of pr some pretty good years after right. that. Right. A lot, you know, a run that a lot of programs don't see. I just, I, I'm not saying that Kirk Ferentz is perfect. I'm not saying that um, Brian should be the offensive coordinator. I'm not saying that I don't think there's, uh, even if he is as unbiased as he can be, there's a little bit of, well, he is family. So, you know, Brian might get a little extra leeway than other people would get. But like, it's a shitty season, right? Like we're going to fight for bowl eligibility. We're going to see where this season goes, where these last five games go. Let's let things play out before you create this, this your own sick narrative in your head where, where things are actually way worse than they, than they might be. Right. Um, just, I just, I am always going to play that positive devil's advocate when things are so negative. Uh, and you can call me a homer. You can call me a, a apologist. You can call me a, a fucking whatever you want to call me. I just think that posing a, a positive perspective to make people just think on the other side of the pit of toxic chaos isn't so bad, right? That's just me. Um, and you know what? I will sell my soul to pick it, the pick it app, right, Kev? <laughs> because if you are sad, you might need to make a few bets, right? And if you're gonna if you're gonna bet in the maybe you're using the uh, the Caesar Sportsbook app or maybe you're using FanDuel or DraftKings, you're using all these apps. You got to log into each one every time. You forget what you bet you made a bet over here. How much money do you have in your account over here? All of those things 
can be solved. Those problems can be solved. All of the bets you make on a specific day or weekend can be aggregated and laid out nicely in front of you so that you can sit back, relax, and hope that those bets win to take you out of your misery of Hawkeye fandom. It's the pick it at people. And I've referred a bunch of you already. I can see the referrals come through. Some of you need to confirm your account on the Pickett app, P-I-K-K-I-T. Use code WALKON when you sign up, W-A-L-K-O-N, and you can claim a free $3, and one in 100 people get a $100 bonus when they sign up. So use the code WALKON when you sign up. Start betting. Start making some money. You can be one in two just like Kevin and I. Doesn't that sound good? All right, so shout out to the Pickett app and uh and them sponsoring us during the season kev i have nothing else um boy it's going to be it is one in six northwestern or one in yep one in six northwestern versus three and four iowa this week but you know what it's drake's favorite weekend of the year (laughs) it's gonna be my favorite weekend of the year because there's a creamy tailgate going on and Bo Bauer is going to be back in town. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can I just, I don't care how the game goes. I cannot wait to see Bo. Um, I, I just, I don't care. We'll, we'll talk about the Northwestern game. They aren't good. We aren't good offensively. The total, I don't know if you saw it. Opened up as the lowest total in betting history. Really? 31 and a half points. Woo! Let's bet the under, baby. Let's ride the I'm under. I'm betting the under. No, but if, if it stays that way all the way to kick, it will be the lowest total in, in, in college football history. I, I Probably all of football history. That's ins- I mean, you just have to bet the under, right? You have to be part of history. For fun, yeah, for history. You have to be part of history. And, um, and we're going to talk about that game. On Thursday. Until then, for Kevin and Drake, who isn't here, and myself, we are the walk ons. We are just as sad as you, but it's always Hawks by a million. Until next time, peace.